All right, hi everybody. Um, my name is Laura. Um, I'm an engineer at uh, Pivotal Labs, which is a software consultancy not far from here. Um, I am in part an Android developer. I've done a bunch of Android, which is actually how I got interested in Kotlin. Um, so uh, yeah, also um, I'm a test-driven development evangelist. I love test-driven development. I love software testing. And it's a big part of what we do at Pivotal Labs. So um, like at Pivotal Labs, we actually maintain a number of open source test frameworks that you might have heard of. Um, we're the home of Jasmine for JavaScript, Cedar for Objective-C. Um, we actually are RoboElectric uh, maintainers. So I don't know if any of you guys use RoboElectric. Yeah, hands, awesome, OK. So um, yeah, I wasn't exactly sure um, how to target this talk. So um, I wanted to actually ask you guys uh, a few questions. So how many people here write tests for your code? Hands. Awesome. Oh, I love seeing so many hands. That's great. OK, how many people here um, use BDD test frameworks or know, know what that means? Yes? All right, how many people here have used like RSpec? Couple hands. Okay, what about like Jasmine or Mocha? Some hands. Okay, how many people here use JUnit? Lots of people use JUnit. Yeah. Okay, so I, I've used a lot of JUnit writing Android tests. Like it's sort of the thing that you use. Um, and I am so sick of writing JUnit tests. I don't know. Like maybe I'm maybe I'm a bad person, but like I'm really tired of JUnit tests. They have this really flat structure. You can't like nest or group your tests in any like useful way to have shared setup like so i actually learned tdd in ruby using rspec and i love like that beautiful sort of dsl that you get where you can group your tests you can have shared setup and tear down so that was something that was really exciting to me when i found kotlin i was like oh i wonder if anybody has written a bdd test framework for kotlin yet and i looked around and i found spec so um well, OK, yeah, my next, I didn't really do much in the slides. We're going to do a little demo. So I, don't, I can't lean on my slides too much. But so spec, with a K on the end, is a BDD test framework for Kotlin. Um, it was started by some people at JetBrains, um, a guy named Hadi, I think. I don't know. I've never talked to him in person, only on the internet. So I don't actually know how to pronounce his name. But um, I found this test framework that looked pretty awesome. And I actually. Um, was interested in integrating it with RoboElectric because as an Android developer, that's what I, I wanted to use. Um, but when I sort of started looking into it more, I realized that there was some work that needed to be done on the framework first. So I started contributing. And um, I contributed a bunch of stuff to the 1.0 release of spec, which is now out and available. And so I just wanted to show you, I guess, how it works. So. Um, Right, so my next slide is demo time. So I'm actually going to exit the slides. And we're going to try and do a little live coding here, so bear with me. Let's see how it goes. Um, all right, so um, I made a little bit of a rock, paper, scissors game for our demo here. So what we have here is we created a test class. And um, it has to inherit from the spec class here. And then we get to pass in this block. And this block is where we can sort of define um, our test structure. So I started it out with this describe block. So describe, if anybody here has used RSpec or Jasmine, this will be a really familiar syntax with you. Um, so we're going to just describe playing rock, paper, scissors. So the idea here is that we can use fairly natural language to, to describe what our test is doing. So I instantiate a new rock, paper, scissors game. And then um, I'm going to try and describe some different scenarios that we might have when we're playing rock, rock, paper, scissors. So we can do what's called a context, which is actually a synonym for describe, it turns out. So you can use context or describe, or actually there's even a few more synonyms that are available, which are given and on. Um, they're all aliases for the same thing, which just lets you define a block of context in your test. So in this context, let's say that player one uh, plays rock. So we get this block. And then we want to define some setup for this test, right? So we can do a before each. And in our before each, we can define an action that's going to happen before each test in this context. So in this case, um, we'll do game dot 
record move player is player dot one and move is move dot rock. All right. So then after that, um, I'm going to actually just define another context. So one cool thing about this is that our contexts are arbitrarily nestable. So we can define as many layers as we would like, um, and we'll go through, and the, the execution flow will sort of go through from the outside in, and it will execute any before each as it finds at any level, sort of in the order of the outside in before each test. I don't know if that made sense. But so we, we can do another context, and we can say context um, when, uh, I guess, and player two plays, I don't know, scissors. I think that extra closing brace. Thank you, everybody. Live coding. Okay. So in our then we have an inner context, and we can put a before each there. We can say game dot record move player equals player dot two and move is move dot scissors. And then we'll get to the meat, which is I guess like it. Um, declares player, let's see, who won? Player one played rock and player two played scissors. So player one won, right? So player one, the winner. So then we could do something like um, uh, cert equals um, game dot get result. And I think it's going to say something like player one wins. OK, uh, let's see if this runs. <laughs> so, and unfortunately, I think the execution thing is very, very tiny. OK, there we go. OK, so my test, if you can see it at the very bottom here, actually passed. So that's kind of cool. So, what this lets you do is define these really, um, I guess, complex scenarios in a way that's very readable and legible. Okay, so I actually checked in a whole bunch of tests um, just to sort of show you like how this can look once you get everything together. So you have, like in this case, all of the different scenarios for the way outcomes that you can have in a rock, paper, scissors game, and you sort of have them in this really nice um, structure where you can see all of the cases play out. And um, there's a few more features that I wanted to show you. Um, so one of the features that we implemented recently um, is let's say that you are working on a feature. You're like in the middle of it and it's not done yet. So you can put an X in front of any of these guys and that will pend out your tests. So if that's not ready yet, you can like write the test and have it in there, but it won't actually run. So if I um, do a run on that, So at the very bottom here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's like a, it's in yellow, which means that it didn't run. So the way this is working with the IDE is it's actually integrating with the JUnit test runner. So it's hooking into all of the JUnit infrastructure, uh, and it's just leveraging the JUnit reporting for pending tests and, and whatnot. Um, now, another really useful thing that people find when they're doing test-driven development is maybe you just want to run one of your tests at a time. You don't want to have to run all of the tests that are in this file, right? Like I'm just working on this one feature and I'm trying to drive it out test by test. I just want to run the one test that I care about. So in order to do that, um, we're sort of borrowing an idea that a bunch of other test frameworks are using and we have the, the concept of the focused test. So to do that, you can put a little F in there and then it will only run the tests that have the F in front of them. So um, when I do that, if I do control R again in my IDE, it's only gonna run that one it that I focused. So all of the other ones, you can still sort of see them in the structure here, but they didn't run. They just have like a little yellow circle next to them and only the one that was focused ran. So um, yeah, so that's sort of my demo of spec. I guess like another um, feature that spec has right now is that you can um, use, let me see here, I'm gonna try and escape from here, okay. So another feature that spec has right now is that it has a command line runner, which is completely independent of JUnit. So the way that we're running it in the IDE is it has a JUnit runner that hooks into all of the JUnit infrastructure and can 
can integrate with any tooling that uses JUnit. But if you, for some reason, don't like JUnit or you don't want to use it or you, I don't know, you want to integrate it with something else, it has, a, it has its own runner which runs on the command line and has some sort of basic reporting. So it has a text output mode and an HTML output mode. They're both very rudimentary, so don't get your expectations too high. But this is sort of what they look like. This is um, me running the, uh, that's really tiny, isn't it? I'm sorry that you probably can't read that. But um, it has really basic uh, text reporting and HTML reporting. And like uh, this is just me running on a sample uh, test suite here. So you can see a couple of failures show up in red. The pending tests are showing up in yellow. And there's like some summary reporting at the bottom. Um, so that's sort of like the, the basic feature set of spec um, at this point. All right, so I think that there's like a lot of stuff that we could do with spec in the future um, that I would really love to see. Uh, this is sort of my wish list. Um, my first, first item on my personal wish list is RoboElectric integration. That's actually what I sort of came in intending to, to help with when I started working with the spec um, community. And uh, unfortunately, sort of ended up working on some other stuff and didn't get to that. But hopefully, sometime soon, we will get that. And I think that would be really exciting. Um, Spring support also, I guess I'm not as much of a Spring developer, but there's some Spring integration test stuff that we could integrate with that's not integrated yet, but would be really awesome. Um, I think improving the CLI would be really good and also better IDE integration. So right now, we're sort of relying on that crutch of the focus test, whereas it would be really nice to be able to like do a control shift R shortcut in your IDE and just run the, the, the test that your cursor is in. Um, this, unfortunately, is really hard um, because it would require doing work in the Kotlin plugin for IntelliJ. So right now, we're piggybacking on the IntelliJ support, like I said. And the IntelliJ support basically just recognizes the class as a whole. It doesn't have any way of hooking into individual methods. But if anybody has free time and wants to work on any of these things or has any other great ideas about how we could make spec better, um, pull requests are welcome, I think. And um, I've, yeah, I would love to see what you guys are interested in or, you know, come up with. So that's what I've got.